Uh, yesterday, about 2:15 uh, p.m., uh, multiple 911 calls came in for the uh, uh, building on fire behind us. Uh, that building is uh, the Cosan Propane Company. Uh, they are a company that works through a refurbishing product for uh, propane tanks, the 20-pound propane tanks that you would typically see on a gas grill. Uh, we actually had our uh, management team meeting going on three and a half miles from here at our headquarters. So our entire management team was the first units on the scene. Uh, that uh, gave uh, me the opportunity to drive around the building the best that we could, get a good visibility that in fact this was what uh, we in the fire service uh, describe as a losing proposition. And by that I mean that uh, a fire in a uh, chemical facility of any kind, in this case a propane facility, is typically a losing situation. Uh, and indeed it played out that way. We were fortunate that the Highlands County Sheriff's Office had already begun an evacuation first of uh, the uh, uh, mobile home and trailer park next to me and next of the mobile home park up the street. Uh, as uh, the units began to come in, we had them identify water sources, which there are not many of. Uh, some have, uh, have very clearly articulated there's a hydrant right in front of the building and that's a hydrant that's too close to a, a propane building on fire. Uh, so they had to look for additional water supply. In the process of looking for that water supply, multiple explosions began to happen. Uh, as those explosions happened, we had uh, propane, those 20-pound propane cylinders catapulting through the air. Uh, some of those have been vi very visible on the videos. As time went on, those were catapulted into Highway 27 uh, behind us here, in some cases as much as a quarter mile away from where the actual fire was. As the event continued to unfold, homes here across the street began to catch fire one by one still while propane cylinders were exploding and catapulting through the air. Uh, again, as time went on, there were three reported brush fires on the other side of Highway 27 along Lake Josephine. We had to send a separate detachment of people there along with the Florida Forest Service to attack those fires. Uh, they were able to get in and bulldoze around those fires and get those put out. So I'm gonna give you uh, a new count on the numbers. This is still a little bit in flux about buildings that were destroyed. So clearly we have the uh, propane facility here. There's actually two buildings and there are some other outbuildings. Two of the buildings are completely destroyed and collapsed into uh, themselves. We are reasonably assured that the only person there was the one workman and that's because he told us he was the only one there. I'm going to identify him uh, at, at the, with the permission of the family. His name is Wayne McCall, a 43 year old uh, male he was the worker that was severely injured. Uh, we are cautiously optimistic of his status. He is talking to his family and uh, we expect him to survive. However, he has a long road to recovery. Across the street, we have a number of, of 17 structures demolished. We know that uh, other numbers have been given out over time. That was based on the visibility that we had. We had firefighters go through and actually count foundations this morning and search through the rubble just to make sure there was nobody there. Uh, they have completed that search. There are no additional victims, but we have 17 structures that were destroyed. Two of those structures were permanent block structures. One was a shed and 14 were mobile homes or camping trailers. Uh, this uh, park had a combination of those things going on. There are six structures that remain standing. Um, and I can tell you with discussion with the park owner, it is possible that the total number of burn may go up as they clear debris away and they're able to see uh, other foundations. On site with us, we have the state division of LP gas. We have the state fire marshal, uh, the uh, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms. So ATF is here. That is standard procedure for something of this magnitude in its type of facility. Um, OSHA is also on the site. We called in the regional hazmat response team from Manatee County this morning to assist our hazmat team. Uh, that team brought in uh, heat-seeking drones that were able this morning, both heat-seeking drones and with uh, gas monitors. Uh, those units were able to help us identify the hot spots to focus on the continued uh, operation going on behind me. So what's going on behind me, they are uh, cooling a large pile of tanks. So the water that you have seen them flowing um, is back there. They are cooling that pile of tanks. The fire that you see behind me is a controlled burn of propane tanks. So much like folks in Florida have heard about controlled burns in uh, fields to get the brush burned out, this is a controlled burn of propane that's unstable. 
So these cylinders that are in an unstable condition that still had propane in them need to have that burned off. That's what they're in the process of doing. We'll be going through that process all day. It could take longer than the today, and I would not anticipate this road being open for a couple of days. Uh, that is the uh, majority of the information, and I'm open to any questions. Do we know how the fire started? No, it's still uh, undetermined. The uh, State Fire Marshal's Office will coordinate that, and as soon as we got more information on it, we'll let you know. The six homes here that are still standing, can anybody uh, go home yet or no? No, nobody's going to be able to go into this. I believe most of them are unoccupied. Uh, there were three families from this park that were assisted by the Red Cross last night with vouchers for a hotel. So our emergency management office is working with them. Uh, when I say three families, I don't know the ages. I know that it was three homes that had multiple people in each one. Is this the largest fire you guys have ever dealt with? Um, I, I don't know that it's the largest. It's one of the more complex. I mean, we had the gyrocopter earlier this year into the home just north of here. Um, you know, it's a, it, we, while we are an agricultural community, uh, this, this area has seen quite a bit. Could you give the worker's last name again and spell it? Yeah, uh, his name, first name Wayne, common spelling, last name McCall, M-C-C-A-L-L, -L, 43 years old. Chief, I was told that there was a large propane tank on site that you guys were very leery of getting uh, caught on fire. Uh, how big was that tank? It's a, it's a 50, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, how big was it and, and uh, how far would we have had to evacuate if that thing had caught? I can, it's a 50,000 pound cylinder. Um, there are two large cylinders back there. Uh, the one mile evacuation was a direct result of that potential. Um, if we had uh, that blevy, which is what a, a boiling liquid uh, vapor explosion, if we had had that happen, uh, we would have been talking about catastrophic results right here. Uh, we, we wouldn't be standing here right now. How close did the fire get to that tank? It actually burned under it. Um, the, there was, uh, we watched with the drone, which was again, the, those that were here know that the evacuation kept spreading uh, as it got closer to that tank. Uh, we watched fire burn underneath of it in the brush, in the grass. Fortunately, it burned past it and into the wood line and didn't, uh, did not compromise the tank. Now, I will say that most of those large tanks have a significant number of safeties to them that would uh, hopefully keep them from uh, blevying in this type of uh, situation. Had it been impinged by a large quantity of fire, again, we'd be talking a different story. Is there any concern that any of these tanks that are still out here, that you're spraying water on currently to cool them, is there any concern that they are still vulnerable or could still explode? The there are, they are still vulnerable in that there is still product in some of them. We are not concerned with explosion right now, which is why the controlled burn um, is going on, so that we can make them stable. But there, there are a large number that are still unstable from the perspective of they have propane that needs to be burned off. Does it surprise you that there would be a propane facility directly across the street from where people live? No, I, you know, I'll tell you that these kind of facilities are littered across America's landscape. Uh, it's something that the fire service uh, typically would not like to see in a residential area and a lot of times it becomes uh, you know the pressures of business and politics and the community and we end up responding to those issues you, you know I'd love to say yes the changes need to be made but I don't know enough about how the decisions were for this uh, to get put here um, you know I, I came to Highlands County as chief just eight months ago so um, We'll work through that, and if there are changes that we can recommend, we'll certainly recommend them. How long have these facilities been here? I, I don't know that. I'll find out. How about the animal hospital? Anything new with that? Yeah, no, nothing new with the animal hospital except that they're not going to be re able to reopen today. It is safe. There were no, was no damage other than the fence line. We put a truck, we put a truck in between the hospital and uh, those trailers when uh, after the tanks had stopped blasting and put the fire out at the fence uh, to keep it from getting over to the animal hospital. But they won't open until we're safe with all of this uh, burned off propane. The they, they took most of the animals with them. They actually tell a pretty harrowing story. They Someone saw the fire, looked out the front door, and they all bailed out the back door with whatever pets they could carry. Um, they left one pet, and that was a cat recovering from surgery. They were okay with that, and, and they've checked on that cat since. Is there any concern in terms of environmental impact what we're breathing in and or runoff to you know, whatever's around here besides the farm side. 
Yeah, so uh, part of the agencies being here, they're helping us, OSHA, the state uh, LP gas, is to make sure that with our hazmat team together that we're all doing the right things from the environmental uh, laws and rules perspective. Right now, there's not an air quality concern. There was yesterday, and that was, again, part of the evacuation concern. Uh, but that wasn't a chemical issue. It was more a carcinogen just from the burning issue. What injuries did the victim sustain? Um, he had significant burn injuries, and that's all I'll say about it right now. And Chief, you may have said this, but uh, just to make sure we have it on the record, that do you have any anticipated time that this scene will be clear? I, I hope to be able to reopen this road by the end of the week. Uh, we may reopen it earlier than that, but that will completely depend on the investigation with the state fire marshal, the ATF, and the other federal agencies that will be involved. Will you also be doing a fire, a fire control of the big tank? I'm sorry, say again? Will you be doing a fire control of the big tank? No. The yeah, the only reason they're doing the burning off on these tanks is that they were compromised by fire or involved in being pushed from one way or the other. The big tank that is still intact will not be burned off. There are also two tractor trailer loads and, and actually more of the small tanks over there on the other side that we're not going to burn off. They were not impacted. Good and question. smaller tank that loops all over the place, what should someone do if they come across that? Uh, they call the sheriff's office because it, it is technically evidence and needs to be picked up. Then call the Highlands County, reach out to them on Facebook or call the Highlands County Sheriff's Office. Quarter miles is the farthest that we know. Uh, there was literally shrapnel out in 27. Uh, there was one that hit just on the edge, one full tank. Uh, but again, we know that the embers traveled across and over to Lake Josephine and dropped down and started brush fires. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you all.